Welcome to the Simply Smart Business Show with me, Gemma Went. And welcome to the show uh, at a time when I am celebrating five years in business and what a journey it has been. Oh my God. This time, five years ago, I was heavily pregnant as a single mum living with a dear friend as I couldn't afford to keep my home because I was jobless at the time. Um, And also at that exact time, (laughs) I launched this business because I, you know, I was, I was eight months pregnant, nine months, almost nine months pregnant at this point. Uh, My son was born on the 16th of March, 2013. Um, And obviously I wasn't employable (laughs) because I was about to take time off to to be a mum. And I had run a business before, you know, I'd run a very successful digital marketing agency sort of a a decade before. So I knew, I knew the drill. I knew what, what was involved in setting up a business. I wasn't completely green to it, but it was my only choice. And because I was a single mum and no other money coming in, I had to make it work. Um, and I'll be honest, it was, it was, it was pretty mental at the beginning. It was, it was, it was crazy. Just me and Jack, who, who is my son, against the world. Um, and I even, I even made up a, a, a song about us that we still sing now to this day whenever we're, we're on our own, um, because it is just about me and him on our own, sort of against the world, which makes me tear up every time I, I, I talk about it. Um, and it was, it was tough, you know, I was working all the hours, I was juggling being a new mum, which absolutely nothing prepares you for, <laughs> nothing. Um, I was as mad as a box of frogs because I'd had no sleep. I had a body that, that had a mind of its own. I mean, I was in my early 40s. So, you know, I was quite an old mum, so I think my body was a bit shocked <laughs> at what was going on. And, uh, and I was breastfeeding, so, so that part of my body... <laughs> really had a mind of its own. It had a whole other agenda. And it was tough, you know, it was really, really, really tough. But I had no choice. I had to make this business work. Now, if you fast forward to now, five years on, I am married to a wonderful, wonderful man uh, who is Jack's new dad. We have two daughters and two crazy cocker spaniels. And we've just had an offer accepted on our dream forever home which actually used to be Sir Edward Elgar's um, summer retreat. Uh, And I will be working from the same study where he penned some of his most loved work, which, you know, if you want inspiration, damn it, that's inspirational, right? (laughs) So seriously, I mean, you know, from that to this, sometimes I think, holy crap, somebody pinch me because this is amazing. Like this life is amazing. And how did I get here from where I was five years ago? And my business, it's gone from strength to strength. You know, I hit six figures within two years. Uh, I I really worked hard for that. I'm on target to hit half a million this year. And I've had, you know, I've had the successes. I've had an 80K launch. I've had a 100K month. And I have a consistent income. That means I never, ever have to think the words, we can't afford it, which is a privilege um, for me, and I, I, I'm very, very grateful for that privilege. I have a business that runs like clockwork, and a team that have been with me for almost three years, who are practically my family. My God, they were at my wedding last year. <laughs> and I also have a waiting list of clients, you know, dying to work f- with me. Uh, I'm living the dream. I'm living the dream. And I am thankful, I am grateful, I am appreciative every, every single day. Um, and I've worked hard to get here, you know, this, this, it hasn't been easy. It hasn't been plain sailing. Uh, I, it hasn't been all a luxury laptop lifestyle because well, that's just not me anyway, even if, if I could. Um, and there have been a few bumps in the road. But the thing with these bumps in the road that I found is they used to freak the hell out of me, right? When things kind of went wrong or I made a mistake or, or whatever. But it's these things, these bumps in the road, that teach us really important lessons, really important lessons. So to celebrate these five years in business, 
I want to share 10 of those lessons with you. And I'm going to do it in two separate podcast episodes. So I'm going to do five today and the final five in my next episode. And not only am I celebrating five years in business, but this is my 50th podcast. So we're celebrating being in five years in business and 50 podcasts. So boom, big celebrations on this podcast today. All right, my darlings, without further ado, I'm going to crack on. My first lesson, uh, what people think of you is none of your business. Now, this is a big one for me because I, in the past... I have really cared what people think of me. I really, really, really obsessively cared what people think of me. And this used used to keep tripping me up all the time. I was afraid of being myself, of putting myself out there, of playing big, because I thought people would judge me. And it kept me playing really small and hidden for the first three years of this business. Even though, you know, I crashed through that six-figure ceiling, I still wasn't as big as I could be, and I I was still pretty much hiding. But one side accepted that actually what people think is none of my business. I have no control over it. And actually, it doesn't really matter. It really doesn't matter. Then everything changed. It was like something switched in me. I was able to be me without any fear of judgment. And as soon as I could be me, like the true me, warts and all me, because I don't care what anyone thinks, people connected with me in a deeper way than they ever, ever did before. And that deep connection, when you, when you really connect with people, being your true self, your vulnerable, warts and all, good and bad self, and people really connect with you, that stuff is gold dust, because that's deeper than anything else. And then once you have that connection, amazing relationships and amazing things can happen. And I really saw a turnaround in my business once I'd given up on that 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 fear of what people thought of me and just accepted that what they think is none of my business and I'm just going to let it go. Okay, number two. Move from a freelancer to a CEO mindset ASAP. Now here's the thing, right? When most of us start our businesses, we tend to start with a bit of a freelancer mindset. And that's kind of understandable because we don't really know what it's like to be a a CEO or a business owner and really step into those shoes. We're we're kind of still finding our way, right? Um, And at that point, we have to do everything in our business with little or no help. We work in, like in, 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 in our business, but rarely on it. We charge like a freelancer. Most people are charging by the hour um, or by the day uh, and not really being paid for their value. We agree on things like retainers, like a freelancer. We get treated like a freelancer because we've shown our clients that's how we should be treated. But as soon as you realize that actually you're not a freelancer, you're a CEO of your business, you're responsible for how it runs, You're responsible for creating profit to keep it healthy and safeguard it and help it to grow in the right ways. You are responsible for building a team to grow it. Once you accept that and understand that and and really kind of understand how that works, then it all becomes so much better. And it took me years to really step into that CEO role. Uh, mostly because I'm a control freak, so I wanted to do all of the things, but <laughs> I realised actually I can't because that's unhealthy, and I'm not good at all of the things. Um, so once I st- stepped into that and I started allowing my team to take on the bits that um, they're good at, and I'm not, um, and I started running it like a CEO rather than someone that's working in a business, uh, like a freelancer or, or anything similar. Everything kind of changed for me and I, and I felt bigger and I felt more responsibility and I looked at my business differently and I looked at the potential of my business differently. Like not just, you know, what I'm going to achieve in this year, but I, I dared to look at what I can achieve in three years time and what my potential income could be in three years time, what my potential team could be in three years time, what my life could be like in three years time if I achieve all of those things. And it made me look at my business and go, holy cow, 
you're really good and you could do all these things. And once you see that, then things kind of unlock and you really start treating your business and what everything you do in it really, really differently. And my one wish is that I realized that earlier on because I think I was a good three years into business before I really started to think like that. Um, And in fact, you know what? It was probably really last year, so in my fourth year of business, where I really stepped into that role um, and stepped back a bit and started being that that CEO of my business. Uh, So if there's anything that you can do now to help you step into that role, then do it because your future business will thank you for it. Okay then, on to number three, nurture client relationships like your life depends on it. Now, um, it's no secret, I love my clients, like really love my clients, sometimes obsessively, that's something for me to deal with, but they are why I do this, you know, I want to change their lives, I want to help them create the business success that that they're proud of and is going to make a difference to them. I want to help bring their dreams to life. And when we celebrate their wins, you know, there's nothing better than that, particularly if we've had to do an awful lot of internal work to get them to that point. Because as I'm always saying, mindset uh, is so important to all of this stuff. And often it gets in the way and, and stops people from being able to achieve their true potential. So when we're celebrating wins and we've gone through that and we've done the inner work and we've done the mindset work and then they're celebrating big wins, oh man alive, there is nothing like it. So I go all in. And um, and that's really what keeps them with me, I think. Some of them for years, you know, I have some really long client relationships. I've, do you know what? Some of my client relationships are uh, longer than some of my romantic relationships. <laughs> but, you know, that's how I operate. And once once I allowed that, you know, and I, and, and I kind of allowed that deeper connection with them, It just becomes so much easier and life is easier, you know. We spend so much time with our clients, sometimes more than we spend with our family members. So you might as well connect with them and get on with them and really nurture that relationship Um, because it's important. And you know what, you know, if you want to bring it down, if you want to take it away from emotion and bring it down to cold, hard um, business strategy, it's so much easier to retain an existing client than it is to create a new one. In fact, it's cheaper to retain an existing client than it is to create a new one. So not only is it about sort of nurturing that emotional attachment, which just makes things so much easier and nicer, but actually it makes sense. It makes business sense to do this. So nurture your client relationships um, and spend a lot of time thinking about how you can do that and how you can improve. I'm always thinking about how I can improve what I do. I don't think it's perfect. I don't think I always do the best that I can, but I'm always looking to improve that, you know, and I, when I was on my honeymoon last year, we stayed at the W Hotel in Bali and everything they did was spot on. And I've, I've got this little saying in my head now, and, and I'm, I'm currently looking at my client experiences and seeing how I can in, improve that. Um, and one of the things I ask is, uh, how would the W do it? And that really helps me to think about, okay, what way can I improve what I'm doing to make them feel amazing? And that's that's all about nurturing that client relationship. And um, and if you do that, they're going to stay with you longer. All right, number four. Understand what integrity means to you and follow your own compass. Now, you know me, I am big on integrity. Uh, it's the core value of my business and, well, me, Um, And all of my decisions are based on it. All the people I deal with are measured against it. And if I ever get that feeling that something's off, I run for the hills. I really trust my judgment and I trust my integrity. And if things don't align with that, then I'm off. Life's too short to, to do anything that's out of my integrity. And having this compass helps me to run my business in a way that's fully aligned with my my values. And it's very, very rare that I step outside of that. I mean, again, I'm, I'm not saying I'm perfect. I've made mistakes along the way. And those mistakes have kind of made me realize when I've made decisions out of my integrity and how 
bad that is for me. Not just as a business decision, but it feels shit. So it doesn't work for me. So really understanding that and learning that and and working out what your compass is and where your levels of integrity are and where your guardrail is, is really, really important because once you get it right, it just feels amazing. And particularly now, you know, when there are so many different coaches teaching unethical strategies out there in online, it's this stuff that will guide you to the right ones. Like a lot of my, um, I made some, I made some wrong decisions, um, as I talk about um, in coaches and masterminds that I've joined. But once I really trusted my integrity, most of the ones I, I make now are bang on, like really good good people that I I need, like I really need. And that's all about understanding that compass and understanding my integrity. So try and understand what that means to you and how you can use that in your business. Because my God, it will make all the difference if you do. All right. So the final one for today, number five, your opinion is relevant. Now here's the thing, right? I used to compare myself against my peers all the freaking time. Particularly the really successful ones. I'd see them all over Facebook and Instagram and wherever else they are. uh, And just look at them longingly thinking, oh, I want to be you when I grow up. Uh, But the problem with that is it would stop me from allowing my own voice to be heard because I questioned why anyone would listen to me when there's these big, important, amazing people out there far more successful than me saying something different. But here's the thing, it wasn't until I accepted that I just needed to be part of the conversation and that my opinion was as relevant as anyone else's, no matter how much bigger and brighter and more successful they are than me, even when I'm saying something completely different to them, I'm saying the opposite, I still have a place and my opinion is still relevant. And once I accepted that, once I accepted that I just needed to be part of the conversation. I didn't need to lead it. I didn't need to be better. I didn't need to be anything. I just needed to be part of the conversation. Then I felt like I'd found my place and it felt much easier to have a voice and share my opinion. Um, And I stopped comparing myself to anyone else because I'd found my place and I was really comfortable with that. So remember, you know, your opinion is always, always relevant. And it's it's better if we're not all saying the same. My God, the echo chamber online is ridiculous ridiculous. So I love to hear a new opinion. I love to listen to people that that have uh, an opposite idea to me because that, you know, that gives me a real rich debate or rich knowledge to to add into my own thought process. So I love that. So just remember that your opinion is relevant. Okay, that's it. Those are my five learnings uh, for today. In the next episode, I will be moving on to my next five 